Okay, um, I've been requested to do um, 10 minutes on buffer stop schemes. So um, buffer stop schemes are a way of stabilizing usually agricultural prices. Um, so the price of agricultural products, um, they tend to be, you know, and they tend to be volatile um, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, the best way of explaining volatility um, is to say, well, there's a combination you know, between, on the one hand, what you've got is, um, on the one hand, you've got price inelastic supply because it takes time to take time to grow, yeah. Um, but at the same time, demand can be demand can be quite changeable you know, as a result of you know, speculative activity and so on. Yeah. You know, so what you end up with, yeah, you know, what you end up with is you end up with yeah, you know, um, relatively inelastic supply like that, yeah. You know, um, but at the same time, demand from speculators can be highly variable. Yeah, um, so therefore that drives prices. Um, yeah, makes them makes them highly variable. At the same time, you know, a lot of primary products are basics. You know, basic foods, basic raw materials, and so on. Yeah, so what you tend to end up with is relatively inelastic demand. Um, but supply can be volatile because of changes in climatic conditions, weather, you know, pest diseases, and again, yeah, you know, prices can be very variable. So at various points, you know, and what governments are trying to do you know, is to stabilise the prices um, of these primary products. Um, so what the, the way that works is that you have you, know, you have both um, a ceiling and a floor, um, and in theory, you know, um, you know, this this you know, this program should be cost neutral, um, as you'll see in a minute. So. In a um, in a good year, yeah, um, yeah, which ironically isn't necessarily very good for producers. So a good year, there's you know, um, a huge harvest and massive glut. And what the government's going to try and do is going to say, well, look, let's suppose, yeah, let's suppose that that is my, let's suppose that's my price floor. Yeah, I don't want price to fall below that level there. Ordinarily, let's suppose that you know we're up here. So at this price, yeah, so let's suppose the minimum price is say yeah fifty pounds a ton. Here the price is seventy pounds a ton. There's no need for the government to do anything. Yeah, um, at, the, at the floor there's excess demand. The equilibrium will be there. Our problem is, um, um, if there's a sudden increase in supply, yeah, then what happens? Let's suppose that supply rises here, yeah, to S high. Yeah, um, our problem is that price, yeah, so so that supply curve is no longer relevant. I'm just going to get rid of it. Yeah, because it's no longer there. Um, supply has risen, and price at that price there's now massive excess supply. And what starts to happen is the price starts to fall until it hits the floor. And at the floor, you know, the government is now committed to act because the problem is you know, that at that floor, demand is still here at that level. Demand is, say, for 150 million tonnes. But unfortunately, supply is out here at 200 million tonnes. So therefore, to prevent the price from dropping below fifty pounds, uh, fifty pounds a tonne or whatever it is, you know, the government has to buy all of the excess supply. So it has to buy... What it has to buy 50 million units here, and it has to pay 50 pounds for them. You know, it's going to cost um, whatever that is, 2.5 billion or something, some big amount of money, because it has to pay 50 pounds for each one of those 50 million tons. So this stage, you know, the government now has a large amount of, um, I suppose it's rice. You know, the government has a large amount of rice in stock. Um, it's having to pay for the storage of that rice, and it's also had to pay farmers. You know, um, as we're saying you know, here, in this case, 50 pounds per unit. Yeah, for 50 million units, yeah, which is quite expensive. And those are two of the problems. Um, the idea behind this, though, is that there's, all, you know, that there's also a price ceiling, yeah, which I'll do, I'll do separately for now, yeah, and then we'll combine them on one diagram at the end. Um, so the idea of a price ceiling, then, is that you know, what we now know is that the government has this large stock of rice you know, um, sitting in a warehouse. And let's suppose, that, let's suppose that in a subsequent year, next year, for the sake of argument, Let's suppose the government doesn't want the price of rice to rise higher than eighty pounds um, per, per unit. Yeah, there's yeah, there's again yeah, there's our yeah, um, yeah there's our yeah, there's our ceiling yeah, um, yeah, there's, there's a dot line doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah, so that's yeah, that's the maximum price that we want. Yeah, um, and what we're saying is that normally, again, under normal circumstances, there's the equilibrium price seventy quid again. Yeah, and um, so there's no need there's no need for government to do that because the equilibrium yeah the equilibrium is below the ceiling. Let's suppose it's a really bad year. Yeah, so there's a really bad harvest. Yeah, and um, the rice weevils come and, or something along those lines. Yeah, and what happens is that supply drops. Yeah, from <clears throat> its original level. Yeah, to here, that's very low. So again, that supply curve is no longer relevant. And what what starts happening is from a price of seventy pounds, supply drops. Prices start to be pushed up. And at the ceiling, the government has said, I'm not going to allow the price to rise above 80, 80 pounds, so you're going to have to do something about it. Because 
at that price of eighty pounds, there's no excess demand. Yeah, so yeah, so demand is say for one hundred and thirty million, but supply is only a hundred million. And therefore, we've got a problem there, which is that there's thirty million. Yeah, de there's demand for thirty million tons of rice more than there is supply. So what the government does is it takes some of that rice you know, that it's got from, from stock and it supplies it onto the market. And it, what it needs to do is to supply that number of units there. Yeah, so yeah, what we've got is we've got excess demand of 30 million. So if the government can supply 30 million units, yeah, then that will stop the price from that'll stop the price from going up because the government has bridged the gap between supply and demand. And therefore price, yeah, yeah. I mean, effectively, one way of looking at it is to say the government effectively kind of increases the supply to supply govt or something yeah by supplying 30 million extra units yeah or you can just look at it as saying there's yeah it bridges the gap so therefore if you combine those two things together yeah um then what we end up with is we end up with a with a system yeah where there is yeah where there is both a floor um, and a ceiling so we've got a floor yeah which in my example was 50 pounds a unit so the government will stop the price from falling below that yeah, and we also have a ceiling up here, which in my example, yeah, was eighty pounds a unit. So that's yeah, that's so that's the maximum price, and that's the guaranteed minimum price. So under normal circumstances, there's supply, there's demand, there's demand, there's supply. Yeah, um, what's happening is nothing. Yeah, the price, yeah, the price is, yeah, varying, yeah, within within those bounds. Um, and under those circumstances, the government does nothing. But in years where either, you know, it's usually, I mean, let's face it, it's supply that generally tends to be the volatile one, yeah? In years where supply rises to a very, very high level, like S1, yeah, the government would now say, well, okay, I've got to stop, you know, I've got at the minimum price, prices start falling to the minimum, I've got to buy there any surplus units. So effectively increases demand, it removes those from the market, and it pays £50 a ton for them. That's the cost. Yeah, of enforcing the the minimum the, the minimum price. The, the hope is that in a subsequent year, um, yeah, when yeah supply falls yeah to a very low level, yeah, there's a, a poor harvest, prices start to rise, and now the government can get rid of some of the stock, because we can see here that demand is greater than supply, so it can sell, yeah, to to bridge the gap between supply and demand, it can sell to meet that excess demand. And hopefully be able to sell, in this case, well, that number of units at that price and generate that much revenue. So the theory is that, therefore, this scheme should be should be self-financing. Yeah, because yeah, the money that it makes from you know, stopping the price from rising when it sells at a high price can be used to pay for buying surplus stocks at a low price. Which is fine as long as yeah, you know, as long as yeah, you know, as, as long as you've got lots of money, yeah, because obviously there's a risk that you get a long series of high supply, yeah, then you've got to pay and pay and pay. Um, You've got to pay for the cost of storing it, um, and the reality is that you know, over time, you know, what, what tends to happen is that improvements in technology, yield, farming practices, and so on, mean that that tends to happen less and less often. That tends to happen more and more often, yeah, and therefore the government ends up buying far more than it sells. And almost all of these schemes yeah, have always ended in disaster, to be completely frank. Um, so therefore, generally speaking, they don't work. Um, which is why there are very few of them around. Um, and even the common agricultural policy, which is, I mean, it's not really a buffer stock scheme, it's more of a guaranteed minimum price scheme. Yeah, um, yeah, over the years it's been reformed so that instead of buying stuff from farmers, yeah, we make direct payments to them instead. It was probably a more efficient way of using money than, you know, um, kind of um, buying, their, bu buying their surplus produce and then burning it, yeah, which is what used to happen with the common agricultural policy. Anyway, um, which to say it wasn't, wasn't a full buffer stock scheme. Anyway, I hope that's clear. If not, just send me an email, um, um, usual place. Um, let me know if you want another 10-minute revision video on something, um, and I'll see you soon.